Alright guys, today we will delve into the Morgius Legion. So make sure that you're comfortable sitting down or laying in your bed or driving your car. Because this might be a bumpy ride. Mordus Legion is a minor faction in New Eden. It was formed by military mastermind Muria Mordu after the Vashi uprising, when he took many of his former Intaki troops who has been persecuted on Kamokor 4 by nationalists under his wing. Their first action involved putting down the same uprising. They performed this task quickly and efficiently, establishing a trustworthy reputation that has remained to this very day. Towards the end of the Galenti Kalari War, many in Taki, who sympathized with the Kalari side of the fight, were exiled from the Galenti Federation. They, alongside others who defected, approached the Kalari state, their willingness to take up arms against the Federation. Many of these men and women were trained soldiers and brought a wealth of expertise with them that the Kaldari military forces were keen to exploit, so as not to cause a loss of cohesion among their existing units, aware of potential cultural differences between Kaldari and Intaki, they elected to form a single unit with the defectors rather than spreading them out among the existing branches of the Kaldari military. They placed this unit under the command of Brigadier General Muria Mordu, known for his tactical acumen. By the end of the war, the achievement of the unit, still mostly made up of Intaki troops, were hailed as nothing short of a modern military legend. Following the end of that war, which has lasted almost a century, the Intaki were invited to stay in the Kaldari society and granted accommodation in Vashi city on Kamokor 4. Over the years that followed, a naturalist movement took root on the planet, centered on this city specifically due to the proportionally large presence of the Intaki residents. Many were the subject of victimization and xenophobic attacks, incidents that began to go unchecked by the local authorities as well. Eventually, a full-blown uprising against the Kaldari government began when the Kaldari authorities attempted to bring their city to order, having descended into almost daily violence. During this uprising, the Intaki who served the war sought to help their former commanding officer, Muria Mordu responded, having recently retired from the navy and took steps to reform his old fighting force. However, this was complicated by the fact that none of them were officially serving the military anymore, placing them in a difficult situation in terms of fighting back against the uprising. Mordu formed the fighting force under a mercenary banner calling themselves Mordu's Legion and assigned the Kaldari in dismantling the uprising, which they did with calculated efficiency under Mordu's leadership. Following the Vashi uprising, the Kaldari navy offered Mordu's Legion an official station within the navy itself. Mordu turned down this offer and maintained his leadership over his new mercenary force which operates to this day in New Eden as one of the most venerated and effective freelance military contractors. The Legion retains close ties with the Kaldari state, and its leadership remains Kaldari, though members of all race are welcomed into its ranks so long as they are not known enemies to the state. The state allows the Legion access to high-end Kaldari military gear, and long-serving members of the Legion who are not state citizens are commonly offered Kaldari citizenship upon retirement. The Legion has set up home in Pure Blind, and now operates as a professional mercenary outfit while the loss of the long-standing contract with Orr during the latter recent hostile takeover by the Serpentis was a blow. Mordu's Legion is still very much a force to be reckoned with. It is a notable feature of their professionalism that the Legion does not perform training tasks itself, expecting new recruits to have prior combat experience. Since the dawn of what is widely referred to as the Empyrean Age, when capsule technology became available for private individuals, spawning a large surge of capsule air pilots across the New Eden. Mordus Legion has both endured the assault of the capsuleers and secured stronger ties with major empires. They have changed the face of their activities with the Kaldari state and the Galenti Federation, acting as peacekeepers both in the Intaki systems as well as on Kaldari Prime. The Legion has also gained several new technological advances over the recent years, resulting from their newfound partnerships and giving birth several new ships in their arsenal. Despite the good standings with the Kaldari state, 
other empires continually find themselves and their operations at odds with Mordu's legion's activities. Being a mercenary organization, at their core has not made the legion many friends. Even within the Kalora states itself, their activities are not exclusively beneficial to the state and the legion are contracted by minor criminal entities regularly to run interference and protection operations. Frequently, Empire agents will contract counter-operations targeted at not only the employees of the Legion, but also at the Mordu Legion itself. With the rise of the capsule technology spreading beyond the privilege of the Empires, many agents began to utilize the skills and the capabilities of capsule pilots to disrupt Legion activities. As Mordu's Legion itself lacks major capsule capabilities at this point, they often come out in such conflicts on the losing end. Although, the recent entries into the capsuleer level spaceship race may indicate greater emphasis on luring capsuleers to their course. Further to this complication, Concord has many blanket issued bounties on different threat classification of Mordu Legion ships for capsuleer pilots to claim at will. As such, they will have chosen to maintain a smaller static presence in New Eden compared to other outlaw entities and pirate organizations. Instead, their bases are temporary, secreted away in dead space pockets, and their command organizational structure is broken down into regional cells responsible for their own local agendas. In YC-106, Orion Machel, the reclusive CEO of Outer Ring Excavations, was reported to have had a personal and heated meeting with Muria Mordu. The meeting attracted media attention, giving Marshall reckless nature and being known for not accepting visitors at his headquarters. Several days later, Mordu's Legion was seen mobilizing on a large scale, reportedly under the direct command of Muria Mordu himself. The task force then penetrated deep into Serpentis Corporation space, avoiding all conflict with Serpentis forces as they orbited an installation in the heart of the Serpentis territory and utilized an unknown device directed against a chemical storage facility. Then they promptly left, no evident damage resulting and were pursued by Guardian Angel forces responding to this incursion. Several Legion ships were reported destroyed in running skirmishes through Mordu himself and the bulk of this fleet returned to the headquarters unharmed. The emergency meeting that followed, Mordu organized large-scale defense pickets around the ore facilities to safeguard against further retaliation from the Serpentis and their Angel Cartel-backed security forces. Many other Legion forces were left marauding in the Fountain region, proving to be a thorn in the side of the Serpentis. A week later, the Serpentis and the Cartel forces began a campaign to push the Legion forces out of the Fountain, which eventually succeeded as Mordu yielded the field. Following this, tensions clearly rose between the Legion and the Ore, leading to the opinion that the incursion into Serpentis space was against the wishes of Machel or that Mordu himself opposed the campaign and was pressured by Orr. Either way, this campaign left a sour note in the relations between the two corporations. Mordu's legion eventually lost their contract with the Orr, as the Serpentists took a different approach to the conflict and announced their buyout of large portions of Orr shares. This put the Serpentist Corporation in a position of control over the ore policy, likely contributing the ore's decision to revoke the Mordu Legion's contract for protection. In exchange, this buyout secured ore assets against further interference from Serpentis activities, as well as their allies among the Angel Cartel. During the long-standing Kaldari occupation of the Galenta systems, Designated as a contested zone under the Concord Emergency Military War Powers Act in YC-111, the Kaldari Providence Directorate held a blind auction for the administration and the development's rights to the system under their control. Intaki was the only system awarded to the Ishokun Corporation. In a deal with Mordus Legion and the Intaki Assembly, both corporations moved to provide security and commercial shipping services to the planet's governing authority. This was revealed to be a mutual business deal between Ishikun, the Legion, and the Intaki Assembly, who retained rights under the Galente laws to franchise both services as they saw fit. Traditionally, security was franchised to the Federation Navy and commercial shipping to the Fedmart. Ishikun commercial ships 
backed up by Mordus Legion military forces, arrived in orbit over the planet in March YC-112. Despite the action, results have been announced the previous year. Until this point, no movement had transpired on Ishikun's part. Furthermore, the system control has been retaken by the Federal Defense Union Milita a week previous. The FDU were spurred to action over the reports and large conflicts over the contested planet. This was followed by a plea from the intact assembly for a ceasefire directed at the FDU as they declared both corporations to be present in the Intaki at the specific and uncoerced request of the assembly. Later that day, the Federation Navy attempted to reassess control over the system by sending a fleet under the control of Admiral Guinet. The fleet was refused entry at the Intaki Stargate in Agos and the Intaki System Command informed the Admiral that they were neither required nor welcome. Economics and political analysts across the New Eden have speculated on the specifics of the deal between the three entities, mainly centered on Ishikun and their financial capabilities or willingness to have hired the Legion forces as a system-wide security force. It was well known that the Ishikun Corporation's financial situation has taken a noticeable decline under the rule of Tibus Heath and the now dissolved Lari Providence Directorate still in power during these events. It is possible that much of the potential expenditure was covered by the securing of shipping and development franchise rights with the assembly itself, though much was left unanswered. There has also been a wild speculation that the Intaki Syndicate and the Mordus Legion may have come to a backroom understanding allowing the Legion to make further inroads with security prospects within the organization. Following the events of Operation Highlander, a concerted effort by the Galente Federation to retake Kaldari Prime from the Kaldari state, the planet was declared a demilitarized zone in a treaty by both sides. Following the destruction on the planet during the conflict, caused mostly by the remains of the Leviathan class Shigeru Titan, the Titan that crashed to the surface, the administration of the planet was divided into two districts, Galente and Caldare controlled. Soon afterwards, the Mordu Legion announced their appointment as planetary security. This deal was, again, broken by the Ishikun Corporation stepped in to negotiate terms of the ceasefire and the Caldare Prime Treaty that followed. Having an already established relationship with the Legion due to their mutual roles in the Intaki system, the Legion was seen by both sides of the conflict to be an ideal and already proven neutral solution to the question of security of that planet. Mordor's Legion remains currently in the complete control of the planet's security coordination and have worked closely with the Ishikun Corporation in the Kaldara districts and material acquisition in the Galente district. The Legion also provides regular reports to the Kaldari Chief Executive Panel and the Galente Senate for sake of transparency. Since their appointment as Security Legion has revised praise from both administration and their handling of the civilian populace, while complaints against the Legion have been made for some instances of heavy heartedness, overall no major incidents have arisen. Documented cases of the Legion successfully claiming a neutralizing outbreak of the violent state they have been both effective and even handed in their duties. In YC-116, the Mordus Legion reportedly fielded new ship designs in what seems like a shakedown cruiser around their home region, as well as the operations in the Intaki system. Shipping reports in Intaki specifically highlighted unknown silhouettes dispersed among the traditional Kaldari designed Mordus Legion patrols, engaging in interdiction activities as well as seemingly leading the patrol fleets. Eventually, these new ships were classified under the Concorde records, revealing three new ships to be deployed by the Legion, a frigate class, the Garmer, a cruiser class, the Orthos, and the battleship class, the Bargest. These closed statistics for these ships displayed a preference for advanced missile technology and a long-range warp drive disruption, seemingly derived from both Kaldari and Galente technology. More importantly, these new ships' classes are entirely designed from the ground up 
to accommodate capsule command systems. Unlike their older Kaldari designs, which have mostly been traditional bridge crew, operated with a few capsule air pilots among the Legion in general. This has though re-sparked speculations surrounding the nature of the relationships between the Mordius Legion and the Kaldari and the Galente partners. Ishikun, not only for the introduction of capsule technology granted to them by the Jove Empire, have been a major influence in the development of missile technology now prevalent in most Kaldari ship designs today. It was later revealed that the Legion have acquired the use of one of Ishikun's think tanks by the name Kiragustekta to help design a new ship, fitting to the need of the Legion in their new role in Intaki. This same think tank was recently credited with the development of the Advanced Target Spectrum Breaker System. While the Legion has not confirmed any specifics, stating it as a matter of proprietary security, it is thought this may have been a larger part in their deal to secure Intaki space. Ishikun have also refused to comment on this, citing similar reasons to confidentiality. The Legion didn't actually participate in the fighting, but the rapid response and the clear willingness recruitment activity is at an all-time high as the Legion has been actively seen seeking new recruits among the disaffected soldiers in the current war zones. Fueled by the recent turmoil following the dissolving of the Kaldari Providence Directorate and Tibus Heath regime, many Kaldari soldiers has taken to joining the Legion, seeking to put their military skills to use in a different field. Likewise, Galente military personnel who are seen the Legion operate close up in the role on Kaldari Prime are known to have reassigned their positions in the Federation Navy in exchange for employment with the Legion. And here is a little something about Muria. Muria was a Deities born on Hakkonen III. It was clear that he was to have a significant, augmented path to greatness. The son of a chief risk officer for Ishikun and a senior Czech officer initially under her charge in the Kaldari Navy, his parents' contribution to the state in the ongoing Galente Kaldari War meant that they were able to afford quality medical assistance during his mother's pregnancy and for months after delivery. Maria's education befitted a child that demonstrated an aptitude for both academic and a leader. Regularly identified in school reports as focused, strategic, hungry for knowledge, loyal, liberal and meticulous. Muria also managed to earn the respect of his peers despite his dominance over many of them in the competitive environment of Kaldari schooling. Muria's parents were approached before his mandatory military service to confirm what they already suspected. His military service would extend far beyond common conscription. Mordu was officer material, much like his parents, and as the war with the Galente continued, adepts such as he was invaluable to the Kaldari war machine's longer term efforts. It's no surprise that Moria's reputation, as well as the recent action of his legion, have led to a swelling of his ranks. The rapid response and clear willingness to get involved has earned them plenty of additional friends within the Kaldari Navy and the Mega Corporation security forces. Fueled by the recent turmoil following the dissolvement of the Kaldari Providence Directorate and TBC regime, many Kaldari soldiers have taken to joining the Legion, and Galente military personnel who witnessed Mordu Legions operate on Kaldari Prime are also seeking to be led by Muria Mordu. And I hope you guys enjoyed that, and if you want more then tell me that in the comments, and I see you guys again.